Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the monthly live broadcast from the Division of Interventional Cardiology here at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Uh, we welcome you for another exciting uh, case here from a peripheral cath lab uh, led by Dr. Krishnan. Due to some scheduling conflict, we have to bring you a, a week earlier, uh, but uh, usually our schedule is fourth Wednesday of the month, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. But without further ado, uh, good morning, PK. Good morning, Dr. Guja. Good well, morning, Vishal. Well, good morning, Vishal, and uh, thank you so much for uh, looking so uh, spiffy this morning. You look very, very, I got to admit that, that, that dapper. You look, you look very dapper. And, uh, you know, the, the tie is very Trumpian. You know, you got the red tie going. Very good job. And I like the thumb, too. But no, well, all jokes <laughs> aside, we'd like to welcome all of you uh, to a, a new year of, uh, of uh, you know, our Peripheral Interventions Live. Um, and uh, we are very excited this year to have two new fellows. I want to start with the fellows first. Uh, to, to my right is Dr. Twinkle Singh. She's uh, one of our old interventional fellows uh, from, uh, from our Mount Sinai uh, Interventional Coronary Program, who was kind enough to decide to stay with us and, uh, and, and, uh, and learn a little bit of endovascular techniques. Uh, of course, to my right, everybody knows Dr. Karthik Guja, the Associate Director of our program. Uh, and then, and then uh, we're missing Ray today. We're missing him. He's uh, on vacation. And uh, Dr. Sharma, our new faculty, is also uh, not here, unfortunately not here today. Dr. Sardar has moved on to be a, a uh, structural fellow this year to expand his horizons. And we have Elizabeth, our, our, uh, our lead nurse, and we've got Damien, uh, as always, uh, manning all the equipment and helping us give, be successful. But, you know, uh, in this July to this coming December, um, we've made a, a, conscience, uh, a conscious focus on, on demonstrating different techniques of intervention. That's gonna be our goal for this year and also very interesting cases that are not uh, something that you and I would see every single day. So, so therefore the first case is actually a fantastic case of, of, uh, of not only a CTO but on management of a bifurcation. And I think it's very important to, to see uh, the different techniques and the sort of cross-pollination that occurs between interventional cardiology uh, techniques and endovascular techniques in being able to successfully treat these, uh, these lesions. So with, with that introduction, I also wanted to say, invite all of you to our uh, endovasc uh, New, NY, New York Endovascular Symposium on October 15th and 16th, uh, which will consist of live cases from multiple, multiple centers this time, rather than just Mount Sinai. So this time we've gone ahead and done uh, a collaboration uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Dr. John Runback in, in New Jersey, uh, who's gonna be sending cases uh, from New Jersey uh, for the S. FA session, uh, Dr. Jose Wiley in Montefiore, who's going to be sending some cases uh, for our um, uh, ILIAC session, uh, Dr. Um, um, uh, George Adams from Rex Hospital, uh, who's going to be sending in some cases for all, uh, probably all three sessions, and, and Dr. Christopher Metzger from, uh, from Kingsport in Tennessee, who's also going to be sending some cases for our CLI session. And of course, uh, you will get live cases from Mount Sinai as well, but we felt that this time it'll be a nice collaborative effort between multiple uh, institutions so that uh, the different techniques can be discussed in a, in a, in a very, uh, how can you say, robust forum. So I invite all of you, uh, it's, it's actually a new venue that, that we're, we're all, me, Dr. Guja and Dr. Kapoor, along with Dr. Ferries, McKinsey and Lukstein are hosting this. Uh, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, it's gonna be a phenomenal, phenomenal event and it's in the inaugural year. Um, and uh, so the other thing also for the fellows, uh, we are, we're holding our, wow, this is, I don't even know, I think our 10th uh, 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 fellows course for the yes. Mount Sinai fellows course. So uh, we welcome you to apply for the grants and come and join us, which will be held on October 14th. And obviously you'll be there the 15th and 16th. After that long-winded introduction, uh, I wanna ask Twinkle to go ahead and, and present this wonderful case so we can get started. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. So our today's case is about calcified popliteal CTO. So a uh, patient is a 70-year-old male, status post proximal and mid-left SFA intervention on 7 July with subsequent improvement in the left lower extremity symptoms. Now he's presenting with right more than left lifestyle limiting claudication and rest pain with a Rutherford category 4. Exam shows 1 plus dorsa, uh, dorsalis pedis pulse left side and dopplerable DP and PT on the right side. His past medical history is significant for uh, history of cabbage in 2013 and subsequent PCIs. He has ischemic cardiomyopathy with an EF of 20%. 
ESRD or dialysis, diabetes, hypertension, and is an ex-smoker. Medications, aspirin, Plavix, Lipitor, Carvedilol, and uh, Glimepiride. His lab, pertinent labs are uh, significant for hemoglobin of 10.1, uh, platelets of 170, and INR of 1.5. Okay, so uh, this is uh, our uh, previous right lower extremity runoff, some SFA disease there. And as you can see, the popliteal is CTO with reconstitution to the tibial vessels. Right. Yeah. Yes. This, this shows it more clearly. CTO, it reconstitutes before the trifurcation. So. And our food DSA from last time that shows approximately a two-vessel runoff. Okay, so um, well, actually, so that before was you get into mm -hmm. get into this, I think it's important. Let's go over our, our, our pictures here with Dr. Guja. So you can see here, Vishal, that that you have a like uh, like Dr. Singh showed us, you have a a, a robust SFA with some moderate disease, but definitely not causing. Uh, any issues in terms of ulceration. But the real money shot is at the level of the popliteal, which, uh, which uh, Twinkle showed so well. But again, that was not, a, that's a coronary camera. This is a peripheral camera. And you can see here, you can see a robust trifurcation uh, with a short segment uh, CTO. Right. So, so, so I think I think one of the challenges is well, how do you deal with the AT and the and the perineal? How do you how do you deal with this? And I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, myself and Dr. Singh, when we discussed this with you, we we felt that this is a great case to discuss live. So, so some of the challenges. I mean, Karthik, why don't you illustrate and discuss about some of the challenges that you see uh, with these kind of lesions? Uh, break it down into crossing first, and let's talk about the challenges of crossing. But prior to crossing, let's talk about access. And 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 what are, what what are some of the things that you think about? So I I, I mean <clears throat> we <clears throat> we almost always go integrate from the uh, from the opposite side. Um, I mean, if it's calcified popliteal uh, for the support, sometimes it's not a barrier to get an anti-grade access. And especially if you're getting it at the trifurcation like this, uh, get the distal cap is where the problem will come. I think the proximal cap is much easier to catch, but the distal cap is where you don't want to lose any vessel. Um, you don't, if, by, if you create a dissection plane and enter into any of the tibial vessels, the other tibial vessels might shut down. Uh, when you get an anti-grid flow. So sometimes getting a pedal axis helps you find that nub, distal cap, and meet the proximal cap uh, in the middle. So that's the major problem with this kind of a trifurcation lesion is you don't know where, how the distal cap behaves, uh, the dissection, and of course calcification, the support. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, so Vishal, what about you? I mean, I, when, can, can you go scene minus, brother? Yeah, I, I just want to let's look at let's look at that trifurcation, and for our for everybody at home, let's give us give some of your thoughts on what do you think of the challenges, and I'll weigh in at the end. No, I think I think it's a very good point Karthik has brought up about regarding access, like being the primary determinant here. I mean, here you can see all the three vessel good runoff, ATS, and moderate disease as well. So, approach ideally should be, uh, I mean, anti grade access through the SFA. You can go up and over. Some people are also proponents of anti-grade right CFA access in this case because of the short, uh, more deliverability, torqueability yeah, yeah. as well, which Karthik discussed. So that is one of the good options. But uh, in I, in this case, if we fail proximally from the top, I would not be hesitant to quickly switch over to pedal accesses because the tibial vessels are good and healthy and, uh, uh, and then we can actually get a good distal nub and actually connect through the popliteal vessel more, more uh, favorably as compared to finding an axis from the uh, from the top down. So yep, that's yep. one of the good options right there. Well, I, I agree with all the points. I think I think a couple of things also in Twinkle Shot. I think you see it a little bit better. Uh, you see that there's a lot of hibernation. So I think Twinkle, if you go to the next picture, you you can see here that what we did was we went down and we took a catheter and then we injected. And Dr. Gujo will show you. So you can yeah. see the level that's of hibernation. The that's there. So you can see that there's also a lot of layered thrombus versus crud versus calcium. calcium you really can't yeah. tell, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. The second thing is go to the runoff. Uh, to, we didn't do a runoff, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Go to how it fills, Twinkle. 
the picture of how it fills. I think it's very important to see how the trifurcation fills. And this is where uh, I want everybody to understand, like you need to understand what, what collaterals are filling your distal vessel, especially when at the nub you have a collateral that comes and fills. So you see, you notice how the entire distal vessel, especially the AT, the PT, and the perineal fills, but you have collaterals coming off the distal pop. So this has no genicular collaterals coming from the profunda. So it's very important as an interventionist to understand that when you go down and slide down and you dissect, say you decide to do a dissection reentry technique, things that uh, that Twinkle will be talking about, you you'll see that if you close these collaterals, you can turn this leg from an uh, from a you know a critical limb ischemia to an acute limb ischemia. So it's very important to always take a visualization because not only does the posterior tibial fill from the distal SFA or proximal pop, the 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 actual AT also fills from that same collateral. So these these are very, very important subtle points that a good interventionist needs to look at. You can see it right there. And 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 the, and the third thing is, you also have to understand, okay, like the, everything Dr. Guja and Dr. Kapoor talked about, is when you look at this cap, you want to say to yourself, well, if I cross from above, am I willing to sacrifice any of the vessels? And the true answer is no. Because if you do a distal pop uh, to a, 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 a AT or a perineal or a posterior tibial bypass, it's a short segment bypass, easy to get a vein, the patencies are gonna be great at five years. However, this patient is not a bypass candidate because he has ischemic cardiomyopathy, low EF, but you also have to think about different options and, and what it is. So if you go from above and you push into the AT and you lose the DP and the perineal and you lose that posterior tibial, uh, the popliteal collateral to the PT, you may end up with single vessel runoff <laughs> after this case. Not, but, but we saw that the arch was patent, so likely not, but you're still not gonna get it. You're gonna get a suboptimal outcome. So I completely agree with what Dr. Guja says and what you said, Vishal. What we're going to do is we're going to start from above. We're going to work with the wire to till we get to that distal, uh, I would say, you know, whatever, popliteal because it's right above the AT uh, cap. If it's behaving funny, we're going to go from the posterior tubular axis and cross from below. Because once we cross from below, we can externalize the wire, and we don't have to balloon across the AT. Hopefully not. Well, so we'll take a look. So that's going to be our, our general idea. So now, now let's talk a little bit about wires. Before, so I'm going to go to Twinkle, but before we go to her presentation, I'm going to ask both of you to choose the wire we should use. Uh, Karthik, what do you think? I mean, you obviously go to the next one, Twinkle. The uh, the um, the picture and then we'll talk about what and what's our wire strategy and we and you can put us on the side where well, when Dr. Singh presents. I mean here I would definitely try an 014 wire first. Okay. And see how it behaves. Uh huh. And then I would not waste too much time on it. If if it's if I'm getting a too much resistance with 014 wire, I don't know if that's clot or calcium. That's uh, sure. that's what my 014 wire is going to tell me. Mm -hmm. If it sails through its clot, if it's having a lot of resistance, then it's probably organized thrombus right. or calcium. I would just immediately switch to 018 wire. And, and which wires in particular? Uh, I mean, I would go with Thermo Gold. That's what mm -hmm. I would. I would start with Confianza wire or an Astrada wire, which uh -huh. has a very uh, uh, high gram tip load. Uh -huh. And then I would probably switch to 018 Thermo Gold or V18. Vishal? Yeah, I think I agree, Arvind. I'll, initially, I'll go for a hydrophilic wire, try to see if I can find my micro channel and sail through it, and hopefully. We are uh, home, but in, in case there, you have a true CTO uh, with a superimposed thrombus, then we can probably yeah. go up with a stiffer CTO wires like your Confianzas and Astaros and Vins and all the wires, and then uh, quickly switch over to an Oven 8, increasing our uh, penetration power and hopefully cross the lesion. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to go on Super Zoom, what we call as PK, uh, PK Vision View. And, and, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and fill this because, you know, as most of you know, I'm, I'm unable to see in my old age. Uh, and um, and so, so, Twinkle, why don't you start the presentation, which you've done a great job on, okay. and, and start talking about it. And Karthik and Vishal, if you guys can also comment on our presentation as we go forward. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, indications you, to fix a FEMPOP CTO lesions is um, appropriate in patients with lifestyle-limiting claudications with Rutherford class two and three who have failed or are intolerant to pharmacological and exercise therapy, or patients with CLI with a Rutherford classification of four and six. So strategy, um, like Dr. Krishna already discussed about it, but for this case, uh, the options to for the access would have been anti-grade up and over, which we did from the left side, or anti-grade ipsilateral into the um, uh, proximal SFA or CFA, and cross and or retrograde transpedal, which we might require. 
Um, crossing with a uh, anti-grade wire O14 wire will be our first choice with a microcatheter, and escalation to either O18 or O35 uh, wire to break the gap if needed. So revascularization strategies uh, here after the crossing would be the atherectomy with PTA and then uh, DCB versus DES uh, for the FEMPOP. So I'm uh, now just talk, talking about a little bit about the CTO classifications for lower extremities. Uh, the CTOP classification, uh, which comes from the CTOP study, uh, may, uh, stands for CTO crossing approach based on plaque morphology. Uh, they classify uh, CTOs in uh, four categories based on the gap morphology. So type one would be uh, uh, if you have a concave proximal cap and a concave distal cap, and type two concave uh, proximal convex distal, which is the most common type, and then type three, which you have convex proximal and a concave distal, and type four, where you have both caps are con convex. So and, and the cap morphology also sorts of decides the the approach uh, for a CTO crossing. Like in type one, the anti-grade or even dual access, and for type two, dual access with sub uh, with sub interval at the distal cap. Or type three, where anti-grade or dual access, and type four is probably more suited for a retrograde access. Uh, another uh, classification uh, for uh, to look at CTO is uh, based on it called PCTO classification based on length of the lesion and uh, plaque morphology and also they look at the uh, target vessel. So if you have a short uh, short CTO length meaning less than 50 with a tapered proximal cap, which most likely our lesion looks like, then you classify as a type 1A and then anti-grade first anti-grade approach is um, is recommended as the lesions get longer with lengths more than 150 and your target vessels are suboptimal and the proximal cap is uh, ambiguous in those patients uh, the hybrid approach with anti-grade and retrograde uh, is recommended and uh, for the lesions in between anti-grade or retrograde depending on the uh, morphology of the CTO. So uh, some of the anti-grade techniques um, that uh, that are talked about is uh, first is anti-grade intraluminal wiring, which is first that we decide. And if the lesion is longer, then anti-grade dissection re-entry. Mm -hmm. So first of them, star standing for sub-intimal tracking and re-entry is uh, basically meaning continue to advance a knuckled guide wire until it spontaneously re-enters a true lumen. Okay, and the another is last technique, which stands for limited anti-grade and sub-intimal tracking, which, uh, so basically re-entry in uh, this particular technique is achieved by using a guide wire with an acute bend, distal bend, and like at one to two mm um, at the distal end of the wire. So talk about a little bit about the crossing, the retrograde crossing techniques, which are more advanced. Uh, first is uh, the retrograde itself, just coming from the transpedal and advancing the wire uh, through the distal cap. The second is reverse card. So reverse card basically uh, means that you have an anti-grade wire and a distal uh, retrograde wire. Uh, you have a balloon on the anti-grade wire. You perform the balloon angioplasty in the proximal part of the CTO. Uh, basically breaking the intimal septum and then advance the retrograde wire uh, through the subintimal space into proximal true lumen. The, the CAR technique, which is uh, essentially similar, but in this uh, case, you have the you perform balloon angioplasty from the distal cap and have the balloon on the retrograde wire and then push the anti-grade wire into the distal lumen. Uh, another um, uh, is double balloon, where you have the balloons on both your anti-grade and distal wires, and hoping that uh, balloon angioplasty will submerge the two sub-intimal planes and uh, and fa facilitating the uh, and, uh, uh, entry into the true lumen either by anti-grade or retrograde wire. The another one, facilitated re-entry, is basically achieved by dedicated re-entry devices. Uh, uh, one of them is outback catheter, which is basically needle-guided um, re-entry of the wire into the distal true lumen. Uh, just some of the other advanced techniques worth mentioning. Uh, if I could stop you there, mm -hmm. can you go back a slide? Yeah. So I, I think it's important for us to comment on this. So this is a great slide, and you can see here that the, the for the concept for the for the young the younger interventionists who haven't done this and the fellows is that the balloon actually breaks the septum between the subintimal plane and the true lumen. 
So so generally what you do is you, you can start with reverse card, then card, uh, double balloon. But what, what's important is angiographically, you have to look at, you know, where the wires are crossing or close by. So here you can see here the wires are not close by at all. And this is an, a very important thing because you can see the wire is close subminimal to the balloon on the, on, on, on a, either way. So when you when you balloon, you break that septum. Then as, as Twinkle said, you pull the wire back and then and then you you twirl the wire into in, into the true lumen and and honestly it, it, it conceptually it may not look good in these in the in the in this slide actually this is probably the best slide you're going to get to demonstrate this but but the reality is that that what the idea is to actually break it so you need to size the balloon appropriately you need to size the balloon uh, to the vessel and you need to make sure if you go with an undersized balloon there's no chance that you're going to break that that uh, that intervening septa between the subintimal space and and the true lumen that's very very important in facilitated re-entry, what you do is you, you, you take an outback in from either side, usually generally from the larger vessel side, you come in with the balloon into the smaller vessel. And what you do is you point the outback towards the balloon and you, you fire the needle. When you fire the needle, the needle will enter the balloon, the balloon will break, and, and what will happen is the balloon will fold. What's important to remember is you advance the wire in and you do not do anything except pull the balloon back. Because if, 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 if the fold of the balloon grab the balloon, so you don't do double negative, nothing like that, you advance the wire in, let the folds of the balloon grab the wire, and then you pull the wire into the true lumen. So that's very, very important. And it's actually an important technique for advanced cases. Nice, nice job. And uh, just another, a couple of another uh, techniques worth mentioning. Uh, tunneling basically involves the passing of a retrograde or anti-grade guide wire from either direct either uh, direction catheter into the receiving catheter approaching from the opposite side. The reback technique is, I think, similar as facilitated uh, technique uh, that we just talked about with the outback catheter. And controlled dissection re-entry using some specialized entry devices. Double bill balloon technique we also talked about. And the safari is just a subintimal arterial flossing with uh, either anti-grade and both anti-grade and retrograde wires. So, um, so based on uh, all the information mentioned, uh, one of the proposed algorithm is, um, so you look at uh, your proximal cap and sub uh, your target vessel and uh, distal access vessel or interventional collateral and if it's cli if all of the four criteria are met then the retrograde access is um, is a uh, first retrograde access is um, uh, suggested but if no then you go anti-grade first then look at the lesion length if lesion length is less than 150 then yes you strive with the first anti-grade wiring uh, if uh, and if that works great, uh, and if no, if the lesion length is, is shorter than um, sorry lo longer longer than 150, then you try with the anti-grade dissection re-entry with either your specialized devices or just guide wire based, as we talked about earlier, star or last techniques. Uh, on the retrograde side, uh, if you're going for the retrograde first technique, then uh, either just through wire true lumen puncture or the other dissection re-entry techniques that we talked about, cart and reverse cart. So look at some of the oh, evidence. Why don't we wait to do sure. this after we cross? Okay. Right. Okay. So, so that, that's an excellent uh, presentation and overview, Twinkle. Great job. Yes. Can we go live here? And so I want to show you what we've done. So what we did was we took our support catheter lower and we went with, uh, with the uh, Abbott wire, uh, the uh, Proceed, I believe this is, or maybe the yeah. Confianza, I don't remember what we used. But anyway, the, the bottom line is that, that, that now we're, we're, we're actually tunneling close to it. Now, this is what I was talking about to everybody at home. What we want to do is we want to get very close to the distal cap and really watch how we enter. So this is incredibly important because I told you I don't want to go into the AT or the PT. Rather, I just want to enter right into the perineal and I don't want to dissect as we get in closer because then Dr. Guja and I discussed that we'll just go ahead and and uh, and we're gonna have to do another roadmap. Yeah, wait, wait. Dr. Guja and I dis decided that we'll just go Take ahead and, and and get another uh, what is it called uh, uh, yeah. uh, access. Yes, inject. So you can see here what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that our wire enters properly. And, and you can see here as we come down, okay, now that's a good view right there. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to see, we're going to see how this wire behaves and how it enters. And I'm just going to pull it back. I mean, it's not a difficult cross. It's just with the idea of not ruining the, the, the trifurcation. See, I don't, I don't like that. that. 
right? So, you know, it's, it's, in the, it's a, the necessity from below would be just to cross because crossing from below, I know I'm going to assure that I'm not going to snow plow into any of the vessels, right? So again, it's not doing something that I like to do. So I'm going to pull back again and I'm going to try to go find another plane here and then try to come down. Unfortunately, they, they removed the zoom on me. Let's do it again and increase yeah, the zoom. I know. And uh, can I have a, a torquer? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Floral? Floral? Mm -hmm. Little, yep, that's good. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's probably yeah, I think you're right. It's very you important to pull the wire to preserve your tibial okay. vessels. Yeah. You want to pull the wire back? Mm -hmm. You want to pull the wire back so you'll yep, have, yep, that's a good it point. won't interfere yep. with... There you uh, go. Mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Inject. Floral? Mm hmm Perfect. There we are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go again with the wire. I might have to redo my curve because I think my curve got a little dinged here. So you know, need a little bit, a little bit of support. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, right there. That looks much better. I mean, the wire moves well, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to stay. Just... Yeah, you're right. I definitely need a little bit of support. Yeah. So we might have to go with a. Oh, one eight. Uh, no, no, a, a better wire, a stiffer wire. You, yeah. You can see the wire is getting tangled now. And also, the tip of the wire is getting uh, separated, uh, yeah. separated out. You can see the separation yep. of the tip of the All wire. All right. Yeah. So, so get us an O one eight wire now. We have it. Get a, get me a Connect two fifty T. You want to talk? Let's, try, let's start with the Connect. Okay. So we're going to try a couple of different wires, and once we get a couple of different wires, we'll go ahead and do. Uh, we'll give it a shot with. So, so you can see sometimes okay. these 0 4 wires when they get involved uh, with, the, with, with the cap, and now you're having a lot of issues uh, with this wire going through. We'll try to connect for a second. I, I want to enter into the perineal and spare uh, the, uh, the ostium of the AT, but if not, then Guja, Dr. Guja is going to go get access from below. We're going to come back from up, below up. So yeah, once, we, think... once we cross this, we have to talk about the techniques that Twinkle has prepared in terms of how you deal with this and then come up with an algorithm for, for our team in terms of how we're going to deal with this gentleman. So I think it's so very Michelle, important, especially ahead. with the... No, I, think, I was just saying that it's very important, like you said, to enter into the perineal. It's a dominant perineal here, and we know that it pretty much gives you all the branches distally. So sometimes your perineal can act like your profunda. So you might have an ATPT CTO. Like Dr. McKenzie would say, perineal is also like the most essential vessel below the uh, knee as well. So in this case, because it's a dominant perineal, we need to respect that and try to, like you said, try to enter into the perineal. But the distal right. cap is very hostile for you right now. It's very convex, like the C-top with the distal convexity. So I think it's that's what's darker. making you not yeah. enter. So no. maybe and, and you know with these o, with these O and A wires, at least in my hands, I always need torquers. No, I mean it's always good to use torquers. Yeah, that's true. There's no reason not to. There's see no reason not, exactly. Yeah, see, it's not going. You see? already paid for it. Very, so very hostile. Look at look at it unravel again. Yeah. So this wire is also unraveling. Give give me the Terumo. Gold. Yep. It shows the 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 difficulty of this. So I think if this wire, if this Karthik, try an Astado. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think we'll try an Astato 21. Uh, get us an Astato 20, guys. 20, 30. I, now they have a 40 as well, which is more weight, but yes. But yeah, we can try 20. But, but it's a question of the tip. You, know, you got to be very careful with that tip unraveling. I mean, we've, right. per we've uh, ruptured wires in here, and you can see that this level of calcium. So now I'm convinced it's more calcium than not. So, 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 what we'll do is we'll give it one more shot with an 018, try an Ashtado, and in the meantime, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Dr. Guja go ahead and get access in a second, as I'm working from above. We lose nothing by putting a O1 uh, a, a wire in the in the posterior tibial, and then we can cross from above and below. Right. And the question from one of our viewers is, uh, choosing in this case between an AT and a PT, which one do you to go after? Well, yeah, okay, uh, Twinkle showed you the runoff. Right. Um, and, uh, and in the runoff, clearly the PT was, was more dominant into the foot. The ulcer is in the AT distribution, right? So, yeah. so therefore, you know, you could argue either or. But clearly yeah. here, you can see here that this wire doesn't have enough support to break the cap. And also, Vishal, it's not, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in this case, uh, the AT takes like uh, almost like 80 degree, 90 degree angle. Right. Yeah. So I would probably not choose the AT because, again, uh, you will dissect the distal cap. Yeah. Um, it's probably more favorable to choose the PT. 
because you, uh, it's much easier to enter the distal cap. You might even get the nub of the distal cap. You can actually right. see a little bit of nub um, on the distal cap here. Um, so we want to get into that cap so that we stay in the true lumen as much as possible, at least from the distal and proximal end. You mean the Ashtaro guys? No, I think, I think you're right. I mean, and there's another uh, school of thought which a lot of interventionalists talk about is trying to access the vessel which has more disease. And I think me and Karthik did a case last Thursday where we accessed yeah. the AT which had more disease. The thought process being you fix your AT on your way up. That way you're not jeopardizing your normal vessel. But in this case, you're absolutely right. The takeoff of the AT from the yeah. distal pop is 90 degree. So trying to take the two bends, one taking a right curve on the AT and then taking up into the popliteal will be very hard rather than doing a PT, which will be more so-called coaxial with your popliteal uh, uh, direction. So in if, you're, this case, if you're doing PT the primary more... pedal intervention, uh, pedal first, then I would probably go with an AT here because right. it's a disease, disease vessel. Disease vessel. But, but we are going a sheetless uh, technique here. So and the PT is almost like a 2-5-3-0 vessel. Yeah, it's a nice I don't think it's going to make a... Yeah. So can, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna have I have Dr. Guja. Yep, that's one. I'm gonna ask Dr. Guja <clears throat> to demonstrate the uh, pedal access, which we've done multiple times. But I think it's very important for the skill to have. <clears throat> so can you put me on the side and him on the, the split the screen? I'm gonna work on top of the Estado, and Twinkle and Dr. Guja are gonna go ahead and get access from below, and I'm gonna work from above. So let's you know hopefully when Guja gets in. Uh, we'll see both the wires at that spot, and we might have to do some reverse card, card, all that other nonsense. We'll figure it out. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, Guja, why don't you talk yeah, through I what will. you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Can you split the screen and show him? Uh, yeah, we're going to focus on You the can get rid of right the uh, hemodynamics, guys. We don't need the hemodynamics. You can get rid of the hemo. Thank you. That's perfect. And you can make him big because he's a big guy. <laughs> big guy. <laughs> we have two Gujas <laughs> on the screen right now, so... Yeah, that's, that's one too many, if you ask me. Yeah, I know, right? Too much for one day. <laughs> yeah, it's like seeing you twice. Oh, today, today <laughs> I'm the flavor of the day. I got it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I, I don't right, think you can in. see this ultrasound we have here because it's not... Uh, uh, yeah, not directly. I don't think the ultrasound, now. yeah. Hey, come off roadmap for me, Twinkle. Oh, okay. Second. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Okay, Mo. So we basically do, when we do the ultrasound, we're looking for um, posterior tibial. My, my rule of thumb always is uh, I do a lot of pedals, uh, especially when I'm doing CTOs. Um, I'm very liberal with uh, taking a sheetless pedal axis um, because I feel like it's much easier, it saves time. Um, so uh, you go, there are two veins for every arteries. Um, a lot of people say, oh, the, sometimes the pedals are very small. How do you do that? Like you the best ways to do is track your veins. Uh, when you have when you have two veins uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for one artery, just compress uh, the veins. Uh, so that way you know both the veins are compressed and keep it compressed, oh, and okay. the artery will show up by itself. So all I'm doing is I'm putting it and I press. When I press, only the artery is visible. That way, the chances of you getting into the vein is much much less. Perfect. Karthik, can you talk about the access, the entry of access? At what level do you enter in relation to the anatomy? So in yeah, in posterior tibial, uh, relative of where the disease is, I always enter it uh, above the level of the medial malleolus. Um, some people say it's too high, but the the biggest problem of doing below the level of the medial malleolus is the hematoma. After you compress, there is no compression, there is no tissue, so the chances of patient forming a hematoma and a lot of bruising is much higher. So I always go like about a centimeter away from the above the medial malleolus. For the DP, I go one centimeter below the level of the ankle level uh, because you have bone. So wherever you have the bone level, we can compress, you want to get the artery. You go higher in AT, you're going to get a hematoma and bruising. You go lower in PT, you're going to get a hematoma and bruising. Okay. Right, so... Sometimes what I'll recommend people is to, for your uh, tibial axis, use, if, you, if you have the availability to use a hockey stick, it gives you more maneuverability. Yeah, it's a smaller catheter, especially in patients who are thin and the PT has a concavity right there. So better apposition with the skin. So if you have one, try the hockey stick, which is ideal with good resolution and uh, better visualization of PT. 
So and the other thing that see, Karthik talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Vishal, go ahead. No, I was just saying the other thing that Karthik talk about this compressing of the veins. Sometimes even these cases, the arteries is compressible as well because there's no yep. systolic yep. flow coming from the CT because there's no real flow in the artery. They can okay, get compressed as well. So don't get fooled by the compression part of it. It's mainly you'll see some <laughs> calcification and the winking and two veins on the side. So. So uh, Gujar's not gotten point. access, right? Or he's Beautiful. getting access. No, I got that. So the, access, the access, access is there. Hopefully he doesn't get the vein like he did last time. Right? Oh, come Remember on. that? And I had to deal with that with everybody. <laughs> everybody <laughs> right. was telling me, oh, you Sinai guys don't know how to get the artery. You know, <laughs> I but like, I just blame it. Karthik. It's easy. <laughs> easy to just blame Karthik. Uh, so Karthik is going to go up now. and My wire is up there. And what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to now put an 018 trailblazer from below. Just leave it there with Gucci. Let's see if it goes. It may, okay, no, just leave it there I for now. I might have... Uh, yeah, gotten, let's go with an ONA Trailblazer from I might below. have gotten back into the vein again. And then, and then let's go ahead. Uh, give him a Trailblazer. You give him that one. Give oh, him no, this one. One second, PK. I might have gotten back into the vein again. Huh? Oh, you're, no, it's okay. You're in the artery. What's wrong with you? Got of course it. you are. All right, so ONA Trailblazer from below. Free, give so. me an ONA Trailblazer from above, guys. It's a big size uh, PT. That's yeah. Why yeah. Well. One yeah, it's a huge so PT. The second one. Yep. And a second Trailblazer from above. I also didn't. Uh, uh, I was uh, remiss by uh, by by uh, saying that uh, you know two gujas are too much. It's actually not enough. <laughs> so here you go, flush this twinkle. So we're gonna go from above and below, and hopefully we don't have to do all the fancy stuff that Twinkle taught us today. Uh, you know, hopefully the wire will just cross from below, which is what I'm kind of hoping for, uh, because I think from above we're gonna end up dissecting this. And have and losing one of the vessels, so the ideal would be to to externalize from below, um, and then come um, from above. Now we could definitely cross else. from above. I want everybody at home nitro to understand here? this. The reason why I'm being so particular, uh, straight, yeah. please, Give me some yeah. about crossing nitro. from below, is that I do not nitro. want the wire nitro. to 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 go um, into a subintimal plane across the AT. So that's yeah. why I'm being very careful. Now nitro. what I've got the Ashtada 20 down there. And since Guja is already there, I'm going to let Guja dissect towards me because what I want to do is if I'm going to do any sort of ballooning, I want to balloon in the CTO space. I do not want to balloon in anything else. So, Twinkle, just so pull, I just want to just mention my, how much how much ever rush you are in, always make sure you give your uh, vasodilators. Don't forget that. Your radial cocktail. Yeah. So that will always keep so that you don't thrombose, you don't, you know, in the process of doing all this, you don't want to lose any vessels, definitely for okay, sure. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and uh, try not to move, sir. Let's go ahead and do a roadmap now for Dr. Guja. So actually, let's get the wire close yeah, and, and the catheter close, Guja. Is the catheter in the body? No, no, no. I'm just uh, the catheter getting... is not in the body yet? No, not oh, yet. I'm, get, I'm getting the wire. He's going to exchange it now. I'm going to exchange it. I only have the inner dilator. You only have the inner dynamite. Okay. So while you're doing that, let me work from above then. But, I, you know, I don't want to do no, that no, because no, I think no. that I'm going to dissect in the way it's kind of behaving. So let me just leave it here. You, 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 so you, you can, can see, see the vessel. Well, he's this flexing. Next one. Yeah, I'm definitely sub here. So I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to wait for Guja to come from below and we'll work together. <clears throat> Are you ready? One second. Give me the uh, wire. What wire are you going with first? I'm going with command command wire. Yeah, let's go with the command wire to get it get it to the spot. Never go the blindly with gone. any wire, uh, guys. Can you get me another command wire? L- let's <coughs> not go blindly with any command wire. Yeah. Or any wire, period. Yes, I get 2.5. Yes, 2.5 and nitro of 200. Yeah, I think it's a very good strategy to try to go pedal, connect the dots, and then you can well, pretty no, much externalize. I, I, I you have to understand. I don't, less I, trauma. No, I don't want to lose my trification. Right. You know, I don't want to lose my trification, and I think that's important because if you had done a bypass on this gentleman, uh, you would not have. It's a short segment bypass. You would not have lost the trifurcation, and it's not about you know oh what we can do, what we can't do. You want to get the most optimal result possible. Give me a short And wire. that's the whole idea. The short wire. You know? The short wire. Run. We need another one here. Yeah, it's not. It's, you can it's take, for, I was actually much closer behaving. before. Yeah, maybe no, I was actually much another, closer before. Yeah, I think you need to find Give another. me that uh, dilator. What are you guys doing? 
I'm just putting it in. The, you just exchange it for another. Uh, yeah. Which one? Is Put it in and give it to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the entry there. Oh wow! Well, yeah, the yeah. entry is very thick. That's very hitting butter. Yeah, it looks okay, hold, uh, hold reasonable. Hold, come on up, Gooch. Well, I, like I told you, what I'm gonna do? You come on up. You come on up. You'll still have to go. Yeah, exactly. You already okay, have. Okay, you access. stay there. Now, now let's do a roadmap, guys. What's that noise? Hold on a second. Let me go AP. Oh, Gooch, Gooch, be careful. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I am just. Uh, I, I have yeah, to I know, get but this wire out. To rail yeah. You. yeah. No, I have to get Where's this wire out. One second. I have to get a command wire up. That's you a dilator there? wire. Yeah. Show me the wire picket. One second. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, rail now. Hold it there. Rail. Yeah. Oh, good. You're almost there. Good. Rail, guys. I'm going to pull my wire back here. Yeah. I got your wire. Because you can tell I'm in the sub interval space here. Yeah. Yeah. So r r rail and twinkle, please. Yeah, I'm railing you. No, no, you rail him. Um, I don't see. Good day. Are you pushing or who's pushing? No, no, no. She's going to rail me. Can oh, good. That's fine. Let, let it be AT. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. in the AT. Take this out and put the micro put catheter, the micro catheter in there. Where are you? Where, uh, okay. There you are. You're coming. Yeah, the skin is very uh, stiff because it looks like he has some chronic venous issues also. Yeah. So, so even just, here uh, you can actually see how how uh, the distal cap is so blunt that the wire pretty much deflects onto your AT side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have well, to he, really no, try but, to but screw he, it no, in he, as well. No, he, wa he was he was in in something. Got it. You want to make it in Nick or something? Yeah, we, I made I made it already. I made okay. it. I made it. So we, that's why we're getting the catheter back in. I made okay, it. Are you advancing? Are you in advancing, the, advancing right the catheter? Yes, we are. Okay, fantastic. So the idea would be to cross from below and and in, and then we'll externalize the wire. You got it. And then we'll Hold work it, from rail above. Rail it for me. Nice rail, Twinkle. Don't be afraid to pull the wire. It's Twinkle's first month, so PK is not going to complain. Well, when I have you pulling the wire out of the uh, the after we cross the CTO, I mean, <laughs> come on. Things have happened that we've dealt with. Uh, I actually get the most right. comments about that, Karthik. Right there. Perfect. Okay, now let's That's mag it. up, guys. Now I want everybody to see how we do this. Um, let's go ahead, Twinkle. Give me a roadmap before you do anything good. Let's do a nice roadmap. Yeah. So everybody can watch. Ready? I got it. Roadmap. Go, go for it. Inject. So we have the wire from below and above. You saw the wire from above, below above struggling. So I'm just gonna help Karthik here by just moving, and he's gonna. I, I think he should change. The, no, don't move, sir. Uh, he's gonna. He's gonna try to change the I'm wire. I'm gonna change the direction of the wire. That's it. Uh, see, I'm dissecting there. See, my wire is now moving. Mm. Yeah, I'm just, see, Karthik, you're also, you need off. to take your support catheter yeah, off. Yeah, I don't I, want you to go I, I, No, to no, I want to make a bend on the wire because I want to go and get into that nub. Yep, you need to get into that nub. Yeah. But I would just push the... Can I have uh, a yeah. dilator? Uh, can I have an introduce and a this needle? This is where the angle trailblazer may help you. Can I have an introduce a needle? Uh, another one, Damien. Damien, another one, introduce a needle. Yeah, see, yeah, Vishal, right. the wire is now moving. Still, exactly. So that's the wire is now say. moving. So I don't want to dissect, you know, forward, but I kind of like this plane I'm in, Vishal. Yeah, don't move, sir. Oh, that's true. I mean, just All for right. the audience, right. if give, you're not on roadmap, give, you might have to go in orthogonal view to just get give a me good a, idea. Uh, give me another proceed wire. But here you look as if you're <laughs> right on top of it. So close, but... I am close, crazy. but I'm, I'm not truly in the lumen for sure. So I don't like, uh, yeah, Car so that's that, a much that's better good, right? pen. You yeah. see that? Yeah. See that, guys? So that's not, no, that's, see, now, now perfect. That's now stop, Karthik. Now, Karthik, just stop. Yeah. Don't open the proceed. Don't open I, I want to come off roadmap, and I, and I want to try yeah. to put that's it inside. That's exactly what I was trying Let's to try do. Let's try to put it inside to... this catheter. Let me try to, I don't think we can mag up anymore. Okay, I'm going to bring the O14 catheter a little bit closer. Yeah, but I would try to get a little more wire purchase. Push by. the wire, yeah. Yeah, push the wire forward. Push. Try to get the wire going forward. Ah, okay. Yeah. Might be in a desert. Uh, okay, now stay there. Let me come with the proceed from above. And then this is a good space to balloon. Yeah, you're in a little dissection plane here. Yeah, he's also in a dissection plane. Yep. No, I think that's the distal cap, and that's it. So I think this is where our cap is. 
That's the cap yeah, so we were talking about. Yeah, that's a good point. So remember the key now, guys, for, for everybody at home, we've now been able to... See, that's perfect. Uh, we've now been able to see Karthik's catheter is now outside the, the, uh, the cap. So we know we, we're not going to dissect into that cap when, when, we, when we go ahead and cross. So at this stage now, Dr. Guja is going to try to work from below. I think he should have gone with an 014 support catheter I have rather 014 than an support. 018. Because no, this would... is 014. No, but I'm talking about a, like a coronary 014, not like oh, a okay. triple 014. Yeah. yeah, because I think a coronary 014 would have helped you. Okay, now let's see. Give me a torque here on this twinkle. Okay. Okay, now Karthik, stop there. Yeah. Got it. So let's let's get a torque now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try one or the other. Either I'm going to try to cross into Karthik's catheter. He's going to pull the wire back, and I'm yep. going to, or he's going to try I to mean, cross I, into I mine. I think you should you should cross into him. You should cross yeah, into because, mine. You know why? I think it's much easier. Because the wire yes. was going to off to the side, and I think that's very important. Uh, if you for want the to a... so he's going to pull his wire back. I did. And oh. then let's see. See. Uh, oh, you're just behind it. Ah, uh, there. No. No. Now we're definitely no, no. in the vessel, though. I don't know if okay. we are. If you're in the vessel, take it. Pick it. No, but yeah, I, take I, it. I, I prefer to be in your catheter because I know you're in the right spot. You see, I that's remember what he's I... also in... Oh, well, that's true, though. If you want to re-enter, you probably re-enter near his catheter rather than re-enter yeah, the exactly, catheter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I want to avoid. All right, yeah, give me a field of wire here, guys. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe Karthik could go up a little bit and then find a different, yeah, that's what I'm find trying a different to plane. Yeah. Come on, Karthik, you come up. See, the problem is Karthik is getting into that, that calcium right there. You see that? It's digging him, and it's throwing him off. See, the, but the proceed, you can see, is such a sweet wire, but it's getting caught right here. There you go. There. Okay. Oh, yeah. That looks like a different plane from the top. I yeah. agree. Yep. All right, Gooch. I think you should go with an 018 uh, to the Yeah, th that's what I'm doing. Oh, you're an 014 four catheter, though. No, no, no. I have 018. Okay, now you're on the way. I'm going. I can go with the 018 uh, okay, Turmo Gold. Go. So now I'm going to make. He's going to make a Turmo Gold and try to dissect it up. Yeah, now remember, gold. guys. I. It's better for him to dissect from below than, than for me you to, to dissect, dissect from too. above. Yep. So I'm. If I have to pull up back my 018 catheter, I'm more than happy to do that, because when I, when I pull back, I'm in a true dissection plane, and it doesn't matter because I'm not going to leave that without a stent. Give me anyway. a Turmo Gold. I'm not going to leave that without a stent anyway. So Turmo Gold. Yeah, whole one is fine. That's fine. Oh, we have one. We have one. We have one. Well, I guess the give question, me, the, one of the audience wrinkle. questions is, if you if you dissect from below, and as you talked about the collaterals coming just at the distal oh, end of the proximal fine. cap, I got it. and if oh, you end a little bit more talk. proximally to it, would you not lose those collaterals which you were talking about earlier? Yeah, you could lose those collaterals, but you have through and through flow, and you have three vessel runoff. So it doesn't really matter. See, the idea is you want to right. get the flow, right? So, um, let's do roadmap here, Twinkle. One second. I got it. Okay, inject. You inject it? There, there you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm He's in almost a good halfway spot. through. So, Karthik, you know what? Now, yeah, I'm now, coming up. Now, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead. I think Karthik should try to go in. I agree. Uh, connect this way. But you it see, I'm coming down though. See how nice that is? But that's the same track you're taking which you were before Karthik came down. See, it's going to go down right in the center of the perineal, but you're right on top of it. Unless you enter for some reason, somehow enter nope, it back no, into it. No, 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 Exactly, not. it's the same track. Can I unless, have an Astardo? Unless PK changes his plane, the other option, the only real option. Is, yeah, Karthik, oh. take an Astardo 20. You take, yeah, you can actually take a 30. Because you have, if you have because an over eight catheter, that you can take a thirty. Fibrotic area is pushing me off. Karthik, so. pull, right. pull the wire out. Pull your wire out for a second. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, no. You're nope. still parallel to it. Yeah. Off road map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're running just a little bit more lateral to. I agree. All right, give me another wire. For, uh, what other wires do we have on the table, guys, here? We have Terumo Gold. Yep, we're not in the right plane. So I maybe we should balloon. 
Maybe no, I should move now. No, 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 no. Let, 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 let me just give it a shot. Yeah, exactly. Let him try from yeah. the bottom. I think he will be able to enter. Give me a, you, a, you have a, a dissection plane take, which okay. you created. Exactly. You created okay. a dissection plane. We should be able to try to poke through it. Yeah, it's just so fibrotic. Yeah, very, yeah. very fibrotic. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do double balloon. Yeah. Um, give me a talk. Is he having a pain, sir? Give me a talk. No. Karthik, pushing it is not going to help. That wire doesn't No, no, no I'm not well. pushing. I'm just talking. I'm trying to Why break that Why don't you pull cap. back and try to get a better plane? Pull mm -hmm. back to Catherine and try to find another plane. That's not going to work. Pull back to Catherine. Now give a little die to make sure it doesn't come into the PT. And then try to get another plane. It's not in the PT. It's right at that uh, spot. Let's see now. Well, you can come back a little bit more. I think that's your cap, no PK. No, but come back a little bit more and try to get another plane now. That, there you go. <clears throat> There you go. Okay, no. I just don't like how free that wire is there. Oh, that's just, the plane, I think. It just might be another hibernating area. No, I don't like when you poke like that. I think you got to torque it, find it like a area, like and try to find, sneak through. It looks like, I see, that's not going to work there. Got it, okay. Hmm? Yeah, the only thing left is probably try to loop with an Oven 8 to remove gold and probably pop over more into the proximal segment. Yep, that's going to be the next step. I agree. Yeah, it's like Karthi. You can see the wire where it behaves. Yeah, it's trying yeah. to buckle. There's so much fibrosis that uh, it won't see let the, go. See, the, oh, the, the command went into this plane very well. Right. That's why I think this is the true lumen. I agree. I agree yeah. with you there. Uh, because this is, this is a plane made by command. I didn't even talk anything. I think this is your distal, real distal cap. Well, let's see if I can come from above and try to meet the two. I think if you want to go a little bit more medial, yeah, can you go, Karthik, try to see if you can poke through the medial aspect of the vessel. You're directed a little bit more laterally than, yeah, towards, yeah, exactly where PK's wire is. I think it's more favorable if you can. Again, easier said than done, but. Karthik, let's. Uh, um, you want to change your angle, PK? Go another view? Yep. AP mm -hmm. or, or maybe a LAO? Mm -hmm. Just to get a feel of how it behaves. That's not going to help. Let's see here. Hold on. See, it's so right there. Yeah, Karthik, it's, that's just pretty much. Yeah, it's very, okay, very fibrotic. Now pull your, cat, pull your wire back. What do you have, a 20 or a 30, Astaro? Uh, Karthik, what, what wire did you have? I, I have 20. So take a 30, take a 40. 40, Astaro. You have an okay. over eight. You have 40. an over eight microcatheter, Karthik. Yeah, I have over eight. Oh, so then I... forty Astaro will go, and then you'll break break through. Yeah, this mm. is just super fibrotic. I can. All right, so let's uh, let's now try figure one, out. Yeah, one try the higher level gram tip, and if it doesn't go, then you can loop like PK said about uh, taking a Turumo gold and trying to loop uh, uh, over uh, eight. So what happens if you balloon from above and That's try to get I'm into saying. the pouch? Yeah. I, but but let's 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 give a higher gram tip gram tip Correct. first. Yeah, twenty is nothing. Okay, give me a little dive from below, guys. Above, I mean. Are right, they pull your wire back now? No, nope. now pull your catheter back slightly. Yeah, I think if we balloon, we'll get right in. Yeah, right I in think we'll balloon it, we get we're, right we're, in. We're so. in the plane right next to it. All right, Karthik, now pull your wire back. All right, and, and pull your catheter back slightly. Let me see if I can just find it. Yep. So this is also, I don't want people to think like, oh, what are these guys doing? The point here is like we're creating different planes. And at some point, it's going to break through. Yeah. Can I get a torquer, guys? Anybody have a torquer yeah. for me? I have it. Um, it and then, okay, now, now, Karthik, you try the dissection from below with the Tarumo. You know what, Karthik? Do a fielder XT. Let's try a, field okay. try a fielder XT. Okay. Try a fielder XT or a start of 40. Either or is fine. I think because you're so close and the proximal, there's so much dissection there. Oh, no, it's the same. But... 
Okay, let's do a quick roadmap here, guys. Got Don't it. move, sir. Ready? Mm hmm Inject. See, I'm right in the center of that vessel. So. Well, you're not quite in the center. You are eccentric. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what? Try to pull your catheter back. Let me try to come from above, see if I can follow your plane down. There's another technique that I've done in the past. Just try pulling your catheter back because you're going to get back in. Let me see if it just pops in. Nope. There you go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come, come, come. Oh, that was perfect. Cut. Cooch. Uh, what happened? Uh, you pulled it back. You pulled it back. You can get back in. You get back in once, you can get back in again. I've always believed that. Come on. There you go. There you go. Come on. Come on. Get right into my gather. That's it. You're right. You're on the right plane. Push. Um, pushing. I don't want to just. Hello. Give me, give me a kiss. Good, good, <laughs> good morning. Do don't do that. <laughs> good, good morning. <laughs> don't do that. Okay. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> Like there's no affection with you guys, huh? All right, now, wait, wait, now, come off roadmap. It's like everybody's so mean. All right, now, hold on. Ready? Look, I'm going to walk this back a little, Guja, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of dye. Give a little bit of dye, guys. Okay, don't push with that. Give a little dye. It's a little bit on Looks the like side. it's perfect. Yeah, I think you're a little on the side, Gooch. Yeah, yeah I'm going to pull side. it back. Okay. No, 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 don't pull back. Keep going. I like it. I like I'm it. Just, just going to redirect it. Do not worry. Go. I think I entered in. You entered. Nope. Off to the side. Now, now I like it. Come on, keep coming. Let me come back a little. Okay. It looks very. Road, road, roadmap. 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 Okay. Inject. You don't, you don't like that, Karthik? No, I like that. I don't like it. Inject. Yeah, you might be just touch on the side, the way it feels. But again, you might be wrong. Okay. Good. Go. No, I yeah. think he's in the vessel. Yeah. Go. Go. There you go. The, I like go, that. go, 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 go. Much, much better. better. Yeah. Just see what that... Ah, senor, don't move. Nope, you're dissecting. So why don't we balloon it here? No, why don't we get a top. little more gold here now? Can you get this up further? There you go. You're in. There. Yeah. Nice. Uh, 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 you're in. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, okay, yeah. now good. Save that. Okay, off-road map. So now, guys, for everybody at home... We are now Hello? in the lumen uh, from from below, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna give a little die and Karthik gonna let's let's see the wire go up. Let's see the wire go up. Follow me up. Give a little die to make sure it's in the yeah, lumen. Definitely. I know. Just give, can you make move it, please? Nope, you're subindimal. Pull no. back. No, it's not yeah. moving. Oh dude. yeah, it's not moving. He could be in the is vein. Remember. Remember, there you go. Prove it to me. I, I want to prove your love. Give me a little bit more. Buffalo. I don't know. I don't I, like it. it no, I don't see, like it probably either. might be somewhere. Yeah. It, it might be in a vein. So it's possible it might be in a vein. No, maybe not. It's I don't think lesson. so. No, it's, it's not, not in, in the vein. vein. Good, yeah, good. Definitely. So okay. now let's let, let's now push this catheter up. So, Karthik, you Sounds, real, you, uh, looks so okay, weird. Now, now ready? Wire. Now, I want you to push it all the way up here. So, yeah, twinkle rail him while he pushes. Rail and push. Uh, if the no, wire no, comes, no, 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 no. One second, one second. Can you I just want out? to pull back a little bit and then take the momentum. Yeah, yeah. take the momentum. Twinkle's hold it. Gonna hold the wire. There you go. Push. Take mag out so you can push, see the push, push, push yeah, yeah, all the way yeah, up. Yeah, I want yeah, you to yeah, go all yeah. the way up, all the way up, all the way to my catheter. Go. One second, off, Laro. Why are you guys so concerned about mag? Push. No, no, no. He's concerned the about the wire about itself. Word. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry Vishal about is, the Because distal. it's a start of 40, he's just concerned about the wire. No, the wire is not going to do anything. Go up. Push. 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 More. I, I'm more. good here, PK. More. I think it's good. I want to do more. <laughs> more. More. <laughs> okay, stop there. Pull okay. out the wire now. Pull out the wire now. All right. Now give now give him a, uh, now give him a, uh, uh, some dye to inject. Yeah, inject from the bottom. So Karthik, even though just PK for the is record, boss, uh, just for the record, Vishal, I want to say, just for the record, I want to say, uh, PK is much more rough than me and Vishal. Me and Vishal are much, much more careful. I'm much more affectionate too. <laughs> and 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 just for the record, Karthik, yeah, I know PK is our boss, but next time, listen to me. Absolutely. Actually, Always. <laughs> remember, if you listen to Vishal, you'll be working on Thursdays late. Inject. <laughs> 
Okay, good. So we're in the vessel. All right, so, so remember there's an old saying. I know that it's actually an Austrian saying. The Austrian saying Austrian. is, yeah, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. I don't know what that means, but that's okay. So, so what blind. are we doing now? You were... <laughs> All right, now get us a, uh, get me a... <laughs> I need to confirm this with Sardar. <laughs> Sardar is here, actually. Let so is, isn't it true that an Austrian saying, even a blind squirrel finds a nut? Uh, give, it, give me a command. Can right. you please, no, not a command, give me a, a uh, what is it called, a, um, what is our wire? What is our workhorse Abbott wire? A uh, command. No, command. the renal wire that I love. Oh, Spartacor. Spartacor. Give me a Spartacor. So, so the guys, the reason not to choose a command is that there's two ways the you want to do it. Okay. Right. One, it's hydrophilic. So the question is, are you gonna? Do you want to snare this, or do you no. want to direct it into a catheter? Direct it into the catheter. Okay. So then, because then, you have an O35 catheter. Then, right? then give me an O35 catheter. We have it. We have the. Uh, okay. Tempo aqua. So we're gonna go in with. So he wants to externalize it. So we're gonna go with a tempo. We got a tempo aqua, tempo aqua here. here no? So I'm going to introduce it from above. Oh, that's uh, uh, yeah. right. Flush that Karthik. Yep, I'm going to. So, uh, yep. Thank you, brother. Okay, good. Show me above now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, good. let me get the wire. Uh, yeah, don't worry about wire, that. Wire, Let's wire, leave wire that. Give me an one four wire, one eight wire. Oh, sorry, oh three, oh three five. Yeah, because PK is going to put the. So we're just coming down. Okay, oh. one second. So what we're going to do is we're just going to external. Give me a little die card thing. We're just going to externalize this. Die is necessary. The wire go. will go down. Uh huh. Nope. There you go. Okay, real. So what we're going to do is so the key here is to come down. And then what you want to do is you want to you want to point it towards the, one of the walls and then let Karthik just wire it. So where's the wire now? Wire's out? No, the catheter's out. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. So I'm just going to bring this down further. Okay. Okay. Right about here. Okay, good. That's good. And now Karthik is just so, – so the key here is I know it, it looks all cool and everything, but the nice thing is if you point it towards a wire and then and, uh, towards a wall – and then have Karthik just point uh, point the wire through it and then flip it up, it becomes very easy. I just, uh, I, mean, I usually make a bigger curve so that it be, the vessel is very big so it will have uh, much more floating. Right, and, right. That's, so and, that's, other, and that's logical. Right, all you can do is just pull back everything a little bit more distally so that way the lumen Sorry, starts sir. to go down small and then you can higher chances of getting into the vessel. Okay, there you go. A lot of calcification. Yeah. It should go right in. If, if if it goes to the other side, see it's hitting there. the catheter now. Now he just has to flip it in. It'll take a little bit of a uh, maneuvering. But this uh, yeah, is the command wire, right? No, no, this is the Spartacor. Spartacor. Okay. Can you can you give me a talk? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, for can't this, at all for this purposes, calcium. you can definitely you should have used the hydrophilic. I agree with you. But my purpose was to snare it. But the command, if you want to go with the command, go I with the command. I think this will go in. It'll go. I agree. Yeah. The nice thing about this Spartacor is it's not going to unravel. And, and it's going to be a good wire for you to be able to do it. And I can just manipulate. Also, it gives a lot of strength. It's a, it's Hold a, on, it's I'm a, off, Laura. Yeah. It's a steel core wire, so it gives you a lot of strength also. Yeah, the key is you, you, don't, you don't want it to unravel, right? So that's the key. I think you're going to need a... Oh, yeah, that's right. There you go. Yeah, I can't torque at all. Okay, give him a command wire or a, or you, a fielder. You, you need to torque. No, no, PK you need to torque I... a PK. There. Yeah. Oh, awesome. awesome. Well, actually, you shouldn't torque Vishal. You should just allow him to just go right in because, see, if I torque, he's going to make it more difficult. It should be up against the wall. See, right there, you should just pull back and just pop it in. So it might be a fielder, might be better, Karthik. Or we can wait, we can stop wasting time and just get a snare. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, so just give, give, the calcium, give a fielder I'm, wire. I'm Let's just try unable to talk, wire. So at all. Try a little bit of, yeah, hydrophilic wire before you move on to the... Yeah, exactly. I agree, because yeah. it would save a lot of time. 
There you go. Now just make it pull back a little and pop it in. There you go. Oh, Boom. you were close. Yeah, the Spartacus because it's stiff, it just bounces off the wall with the I agree. the kitchen right mm -hmm. there. Get him a fielder, please. All right, guys. Yeah, I don't yeah, have any. I don't have any strength at all on this. No, this is good. You made a good tip. Yeah. All right. So now, Twinkle, while we do this, if you can put it on the side, you can go over the the, the differences in bifurcation, standing Twinkle. Yeah. So so if you, let's one go second, to the slide set. Put Dr. Guja's thing on the side, and and let's go to the slide set and Dr. and let Dr. Singh go ahead and do her presentation. Oh, okay. It's actually, let me, let me torque a little, Karthik. Yeah, I, I can't arc at all, PK. Yeah, let me see. It's like, uh, it's like stuck in that calcium piece. Okay. So, uh, so we were here, we talked about the possible uh, it's in, it's in, it's suggested in, it's in. algorithm. You, you see, you see, we talked about the revascularization strategy for the popliteal artery, uh, really stent awesome. placement versus um, uh, balloon uh, angioplasty only. Uh, sure. We just got in very easily with the hydro. Require so again. I think we should listen to Vishal. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Twinkle. Okay. So yeah, uh, one again, of the studies that showed uh, that the stents, it. Uh, it was a bare metal stent, is beneficial over PTA only in popliteal artery was ETAP study. There was a prospective multi-center randomized trial with 246 patients, mean lesion length of 42 mm, with the primary patency rate was 64% for BMS uh, versus PTA uh, with 31% only. Target lesion uh, revascularization rates were also lower with the uh, with the bare metal stent, and in, but incidence of stent fracture in popliteal artery with BMS was 4.6, which is always an issue. Significant improvement in ABI and uh, claudication symptoms were noted as well at two years. So um, because of the stent fracture uh, with bare metal stents, the Supera registry. Um, show with uh, 101 patients, uh, they showed a primary patency rate of 94% at and 87% and 6 and 12 months respectively. Uh, mean ABI with superastent increased from 0.58 to 0.97 and there was no incidence of strength fracture at 15.2 months follow-up. So uh, now because our lesion extends from popliteal and if we do stent, the stent might end up going into the tibial vessels as well. So there is some uh, evidence for uh, drug eluting stents in infra popliteal vessels. The most um, uh, notable trials that uh, showed benefit of DES over uh, either PTA or BMS were Achilles trial in 2012 that showed uh, that a, a one year in segment binary restenosis with serolimus eluting stent was 22% versus balloon angioplasty only 42%. Um, Yukon PTX trial, the third one on the table, uh, it uh, had 46% CLI patients in it, and they showed that events uh, free survival of 65.8% with the serolimus eluting stent versus 45% with bare metal stent. Uh, the, the third trial, which is mo uh, most um, important, is PADI travel, uh, tri trial in 2017. Um, they uh, showed that in CLI patients, Drug eluting stent was associated uh, with much lower rates of amputation compared to balloon angioplasty. So major amputation rates 19% in the drug eluting stent uh, patients compared to 34% in balloon angioplasty patients. Ampu amputation free survival in the stent uh, group was also higher compared to the PTA 26 versus 15%. And any event free survival was 32% in stent uh, arm versus uh, 20% 20, 20 in the PTA uh, group. So uh, just one, one more uh, study I think that's worth mentioning is uh, there is an evidence for bioresorbable vascular scaffold in uh, patients with for infrapopliteal vessels. It was a single center prospective study of 48 patients with a mean lesion length of 20, uh, 20 uh, plus minus 10 mm. So primary patency rate at 12, 24, and 36 months were noted to be 92, 90%, and 81%. Freedom from any clinical-driven uh, target lesion revask was estimated at 97%, uh, 97, and 87 at 12, 24, and 36 months, respectively. 
So in conclusion, uh, bioresorbable uh, vascular scaffold did demonstrate excellent safety, patency, and freedom from clinical-driven target uh, lesion revascrates using the absorbed bioresorbable vascular scaffold below the knee. So it showed that they are safe. So now, um, as Dr. Krishna was mentioning, that we will be talking about some bifurcation uh, stent techniques. Let me, sure. Uh, we can we can go ahead and, and come to that. But, okay. So I, I think one of the I things got it. here I'm, is- I am railing it. Okay. You wanna, now we've gotten through and through access. Now, now we're gonna do a roadmap here once I get the balloon a little bit in place, because you don't wanna balloon too far into that popliteal, uh, into that AT. So, I'm, so now remember guys, as fibrotic as you know, Vishal and Karthik says this is, you know, when when yeah. when you've created a channel with an 018, it's easy to push a balloon down. So we're just taking an undersized balloon at 3.0. Our ACT is high, and now we're just going to do a quick roadmap. Roadmap, no guys. Worries. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What's going on? No, no. She's just putting the balloon. Mm -hmm. You press the roadmap button. Yeah. In flora, inject. Mm-hmm. So you so were you technically able to tunnel in into the catheter, externalize it, and then yeah, work from yeah, the top. It went right. Yeah. In. So so what we're doing is we're just going to go in a little bit, and we're just going to let the, the the shoulder of the balloon go ahead and do the work here. So Karthik is going to pull on his wire and my wire. Yeah. I so am. are you pulling on your wire? Yep. Both, both sides. Both sides. Good, because that's how this is going to go. So this both is sides. having a little bit of trouble, which we know it will, because there you go, a little bit lower. Okay, let's just balloon here for yeah. now. Hold this. Let's get uh, the track going. So what you want to do is if the balloon may, no, no, may, may accordion, it. Hold it. Hold so it's very important it. for you not to let the accordion balloon go up. So Karthik is now just going to go up with the balloon. So you can see it's very, very tight right in that spot. Right? There's right, one. That's our re-entry point. Right? That's probably the, the total occlusion. And then a little bit lower. So we're doing this on bivalve. What, what happened? Go up again, brother? So it's a 3O balloon you're using or 4O? Just a 3O. 3O. We're just, we're just using a, a little 3O. Tra track. There we go. See, now how it went down across. Okay, good. That, now yeah, what I'm going to do is... It just slipped in. Off, off, uh, let's, let's center it again and just go forward off a little, little bit. Okay. Off no, I just want to take the roadmap out. That's, that's right. a little too much. I'm going to yeah. come back a little bit. I'll walk it back or you have to walk it back. Yeah, that's why I said no. Maybe just a touch back will help. Just a touch. Right there. Go up there, brother. I think it it went down already, PK. No, I think it's good right there. See, that's a good that's a good balloon. Go to ten. Ten atmospheres. Yeah. Okay, down. Yeah. Save that image. Okay, now walk it back into the SFA and go to low mag. And you 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 don't want to pull this out and off off roadmap. Just go to low mag. The off off road mag? Yeah. And go to lower mag for yeah, me. Yeah, I did. Okay. A little bit lower for me. Lower mag. That's leave it there. Uh, yeah, the balloon is there. Already in the yeah, mid pop. Walk, okay. Like, I want to see a little below. Go lower mag. One more lower mag. One more. I want to see more of the tibials. Yeah. And and no, no, no. You're going lower. Yeah, and, there you go. All right, yeah. good. Let's do a DSA. Ready? Inject. Yeah. Okay. So now you want to see whether what perforation, what you've created, if there's anything at all. And you can see here now you have beautiful flow. Yeah, and you can that. see your a AT is a little compromised. So it's, it's important fine. now 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 you have to understand that you might have to deal with that prior of, and, and deal with this. And now <laughs> is when you need to make a decision based on what's happening. You want to take the balloon down and then change it from the put the wire. Yeah, yeah we can change the wire. So we can yeah. ex mm -hmm. we can take this wire out. Yep, Flora. One second. Rail, please. Yeah. I got it. Go. Go for it. Uh -huh. Just pull pull on the wire. Yeah. There's the balloon. Yeah, you can go down a little bit more. Is that the balloon? Yeah, that's your balloon. Yep. Okay, that's enough. Okay, now take out the wire. Yeah. One second. Let's give us a give us a command. Now. Oh, actually, give us a Sparta core. Yeah, Sparta core is fine. Yep. No. I got it. So now we're gonna go ahead and look analyze this a little bit more and decide what we're gonna do. So, what what we're pl what we're planning on doing now yeah, is you should look at this wire. <laughs> it's all like racked up. You can see the amount of. Uh, yeah. Let's get a, tension in the wire. Let's yeah. get a Sparta core in. Sparta core. 
We have it. The, yeah, that, that one. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, so, now the real question is the definitive therapy of what the thought process is. Okay, now now go ahead, uh, Twinkle, with your really presentation. Want to hold this? Now go ahead, Twinkle, with your presentation. Okay. Twinkle's presentation, um, guys, while we change the You put the, the slides. Thank you. Okay, you want to add it? I want to hold this. Okay, um, it's so <laughs> start with the bifurcation yeah. uh, stenting techniques, which are utilized in coronaries. It's bleeding a lot. Uh, the first and the, I think the most commonly uh, utilized bifurcation technique is a provisional with a side branch wiring. So the both main branch and move side move branch move are move wired move. first. Then uh, the idea is to leave the side branch alone and intervene only if there is a compromise of side branch after the main uh, branch vessel stent and also to maintain the patency with the wire. So both main branch and side branch are wired. Then the stent sized to the distal uh, main, uh, main branch reference diameter is placed after pre-dilating with the balloon, of course. And then, um, depending on whether uh, proximal, op sometimes proximal optimization technique is needed, uh, which means that a, a slightly larger balloon is inflated in the proximal part of the stent, uh, proximal to the side branch ostium. Then the side branch is, can, uh, the jailed wire can be removed from the side branch and recross if needed. I mean, we can take an angio at this point and see if there is a compromise of side branch. If it is, then we need to recross with the wire uh, through the stent struts. And um, and then we can do a KBI uh, with a smaller, uh, like a compliant balloon in the side branch and a non-compliant in the main branch vessel. Yeah, kissing balloon inflation. Um, yeah, in basically inflating both the balloons, mostly up to like six or eight uh, uh, pressures atmosphere, and then even can go higher up. And what's the, uh, how do you know? Would that you need to do a KBI? So uh, depending on uh, whether the side branch ostium is um, is compromised or not. So if there if there is take it no mm -hmm. okay. um so the second uh, uh Good. perfect so let's second walk it bifurcation up. technique that we want to talk about is a double kiss crush technique uh, which utilizes six wrench system no, 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 no. only so double uh, kiss crush technique uh, so starting with again wire both the branches Maybe main what? branch and the side branch then pre-dilate the main vessel first with a non with a non-compliant balloon. Is it an EXL, guys? And then pre-dilate the sequentially. Then pre-dilate the side branch with a compliant balloon. Then position the side branch stent with like two to four mm protrusion Watch into the one. main vessel, and at the same time have the non-compliant balloon in the main vessel. So so you, the balloon is there and the stent is right, is there with the stent protruding into the main vessel. Give me a field of wire. Now the, the now the next step is to deploy the side branch stent which is demonstrated in uh, figure E. Uh, after after deploying the side branch stent remove the stent balloon and the wire and if you can take an angio at this point to just make sure there is no dissection and we good. don't need to rewire Put a pressure and at that point, inflate the main a main vessel balloon and crushing the side branch stent, basically as may, creating a new carina and creating more space uh, for the main vessel stent. And then rewire the, the so rewire the side branch with another another um, uh, hydrophilic wire. Then position the both. So this is this is the step where the first kissing balloon inflation happens with the main vessel and the side branch. And we do this to facilitate the rewiring uh, of the side branch after main vessel stent deployment. So as demonstrated in H, you position both uh, the non-compliant balloons in the main vessel and the side branch and inflate. So basically we are opening up the struts of the side branch crushed stents at this point. So that's the first uh, kissing balloon inflation. The next step is now we remove the both the balloons uh, uh, from the side branch wire and the, and the main vessel and position our main vessel stent. Then we deploy the main vessel stent and um, at the, uh, deploy and then uh, see, um, take an angio, make sure that um, everything looks all right. And then rewire the side branch with the crushed main vessel and the side branch struts. 
So, um, and then uh, position the non-compliant balloons in both vessels. And at this point, uh, we performed the second kissing balloon inflation. So the problem here sometimes can be that the, uh, the issue with the rewiring of the side branch to the struts of the main vessel stent and the previously crushed uh, side branch stent. So the first kiss that we did is in, in I that does help with the rewiring of the side branch um, um, stent. So uh, after, uh, after deploying both the main vessel and the side branch stent, now we perform the second kissing balloon inflation and just take a final angio. The uh, third uh, bifurcation technique uh, that we wanted to describe is, um, I mean, it's a two stents and basically both two stents simultaneously called mini crush technique. It does utilize seven French system. So in this technique, again, we wire both the main vessel and the side branch. We predilate both main vessel and the non-compliant balloons. Okay, and then, uh, and then the position both the stents, either the side branch stent and the main, uh, main vessel stent at the same time. While keeping the main vessel stent in position, we inflate the side branch stent. Now, and the important thing here to note is that the side branch stent only comes up to like one to two mm into the main vessel. That is why it's called mini crush. So then remove this, we remove the side branch stent and the balloon and the wire after inflating the side branch stent as you see in uh, figure F. Then we deploy our main vessel stent, basically crushing the side branch stent with the main vessel itself. And here, the, again, the issue here is uh, rewiring the side branch again, because now we have to rewire through the main vessel stents and the crushed side branch stent. Um, after rewiring both the main vessel and the side branch, we, uh, if we are successfully able to rewire, and there are some other techniques that we can use to rewire the side branch uh, if needed to be, then we position both non-compliant balloons in the, in the main vessel and the side branch. Now, before we, we position our kissing balloon in the side branch, we may have to use a smaller compliant balloon first to open up the crushed strand, struts of the side branch stand. So after the struts are opened, then you place both the non-compliant balloons in both vessels and, um, and they do a kissing balloon inflation. So there is only, it's only one kissing balloon inflation that is involved in this, um, in this uh, technique. And after that, we just take a low, a low mag uh, angio and make sure that everything is all right. So some of the older two stent strategies uh, that used to, um, be used, but not so much uh, these days. One of them is coulotte technique. So in coulotte technique, the uh, we again we re we wire the both main vessel and side branch first. Do the kiss, uh, pre uh, sequential pre dilation of main branch and side branch uh, as done in most bifurcation techniques. Then we place our side branch stent with the with the proximal part of the side branch stent completely into your main vessel. So you're deploying the side branch stent from the main vessel into the side branch, essentially jailing the distal main vessel. After this, you remove the jailed wire from the main vessel, rewire the main uh, vessel, uh, rewire the stent, part of the stent that comes into the main uh, main vessel, and then open up the struts of the of the proximal part of the side branch stent to uh, to create a channel in the main vessel. After that, uh, after opening up the, with a the small balloon, then we place our main vessel stent. So the side branch, and of course you have to remove the side branch wire before that. So side branch wire is removed and then the main vessel stent is placed. So at this point, your side branch uh, again is jailed by your main vessel st uh, stent struts the, uh, and, the, and the side branch stent struts. So once the main vessel stent is deployed, um, then we can, can perform another uh, uh, proximal optimization technique, basically inflating a little over, uh, oversized balloon in the proximal part of the stent. And then we rewire the side branch and perform a kissing balloon inflation. And uh, may or may not need to do a uh, final uh, proximal op technique. And after that, uh, we take a final picture and uh, assess the result. Uh, another some other techniques is V-stenting. V-stenting is uh, basically um, used when uh, you, you think we can we can place the the angle is favorable to place the two stents without uh, compromising the ostium of either one. 
So the branch, both branch, uh, both the main vessel and the side branch are wired, and then the two parallel stands are positioned covering both the branches at the ostia, and they we inflate them simultaneously, and uh, we may have to do a final kissing balloon inflation uh, to um, to optimize the angiographic result as well. The another one is simultaneous kissing stent is very uh, similar to V stenting, but uh, the main difference is that both both the uh, stents of the main vessel and the side branch they come into the main vessel. So they utilize this uh, technique when basically both the main vessel and the side branch are of same size, and the proximal vessel is large enough to accommodate two stents. So you wire both vessels, predilate um, as needed, then position two stents from main vessel into the into the bifurcation, and then deploy both stents simultaneously, and then perform a kissing balloon post dilation simultaneously as well. So on the cross section of the main vessel, it looks like uh, the two stents are protruding into the into the main vessel. A modified SKS technique, which used to be you um, used um, before was uh, if you have a proximal stent proximal to the bifurcation in that case you can place your both the kissing stents into the main vessel and the side branch and then inflate them simultaneously it's also called as trouser sks technique okay and finally the tap technique is um, let's say in the provisional we started with the provisional technique and now our side branch is compromised and we need to stent it in case of a side branch dissection that's when the most commonly we use tap technique or if there is a already a uh, main vessel has a stent from before tap, and now do? we need to intervene on the side branch and uh, we need to um, stent it then this technique is used so we, re we wire our main vessel and then we wire the side branch through the main vessel stent. Then you dilate the side branch with a compliant balloon um, just to open up the struts of the main vessel. Then you place a non-compliant balloon uh, in both the main vessel and the side branch and perform a KBI to, to further open up the struts uh, to make space for the stent. Uh, the next step is to take, uh, remove uh, your remove both the um, uh, remove the side branch balloon. Leave the main uh, main vessel balloon there, but remove the side branch balloon. Then put position the side branch stent with only one to two mm of the stent protruding into the uh, into the main vessel and deploy it. And after that, you pull back the stent balloon and the main vessel balloon, which is already there, and just do a final uh, do a cape kissing balloon inflation. So in this uh, technique, there is no crush, crushing of the stent, uh, side branch stent, and the side branch stent does end up being in the main vessel. And uh, by performing the kissing balloon inflation, we create a new carina, and then final, finally, we take a low mag picture and make sure that angiographic result is all right. So these are the most commonly that we use, um, the most commonly used uh, bifurcation techniques in coronaries. And then I think Dr. Krishnan and Dr. Guja will discuss how uh, we can adapt them to um, Perfect. to that's... TBL vessels if needed. Now, now all of you at home, I want to tell you that's a master class in bifurcation stenting. I mean, that was really phenomenal by, 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 by Dr. Singh in telling us on how to do it. That was really phenomenal. I, I, I know Vishal was taking notes. He's very good at crossing, so, so we need to know how to stent. So, Vishal, did you take notes? Yes, I did. Everything is <laughs> right up there. <laughs> All right. So, Vishal, so what we did was we went ahead and did a 4 balloon. Then we did an atherectomy through the lesion. Okay. And then what we did was we went ahead. You can see there's a lesion there, and the AT is not filling well. So, right. after, the, after the atherectomy and the balloon, now you can see we did a 4 mm -hmm. and this is the flow. So, you can see the AT plump right back up. And you can see here if I stop it, and whoops, sorry, if I stop it, you can see that the dissection plane is right above the trifurcation. Right. So technically, we could go ahead, this comes out, right? Yeah. Technically, we could go ahead and now do a, uh, a DES without involving the bifurcation. That's what I, we're planning on doing. Now, Vishal, again, I mean, all jokes aside, uh, we want your opinion because uh, the, the thing is, what Kuja and I are feeling is we can probably land a stent right above the trifurcation without hitting the AT, especially since it's a coronary stent. So we're going to DCB the above part uh, of where we're landing the coronary stent, and we're going to use a 5-0 coronary stent. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a 5-5 supera up top. 
uh, which I think will make sense. And one how second. our plan is is to first, first one place one the supera and Good. then place the coronary stent because into the supera and then post dilate the coronary stent to match the supera lumen to ensure that we have good flow. I don't right. know what your thoughts that's are. Good. No, that's I good. think that's, that's, that's a great strategy. If you actually look at the back angel, yeah, the proximal end of the proximal end of the popliteal is still a little bit under dilated. So you're right; it's a right. bigger lumen than what it looks. But the way it tapers down, you don't want to jeopardize your trifurcation. So I completely agree. Putting a DES at the distal end should be a final strategy. But instead of putting a supera in the DES, we should do the other way around, where you actually put the yeah, supera first. Cool and then overlap with the DES, and then you can expand. Because remember, nowadays with the scaffolding, the DES can out, the bigger uh, drug eluding stents can actually expand to five, five, even a six, so if it needs to be done. Right. So I think so, that's a great strategy, doing a so DCB. So we're going to go up slowly here. Supera. This is a 6-0 balloon. We're going to be very careful how we expand it. 5, 5, 80 supera. So we're going to do a 5, 5, 80 supera right here. So we're just going to go up to 6 -0. To how many atmospheres? To what's nominal? Nominal eight. is eight. Eight. So we're going to go to eight nominal. atmospheres. I'm going to put a three-minute timer. So let's go. Let, let's come back live to the room, and I just want to talk a little bit here while the paint dries with the D, with the DCB. So so I think it's important that that you know the addition of a drug-coated balloon uh, to a supera. We don't have enough data out there, but clearly there are some papers now that are being published that show that drug-coated balloons can be used safely with supera. So 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 we've we've actually Take submitted a paper uh, that's actually in review and actually go hopefully will be published soon looking at the role of supera and cli uh since there's absolutely no no uh, data with supera and cli in, in our in our cohort uh wound healing rates were great patency rates were also phenomenal amputation uh rates were also low i don't want to give away the the thunder before we go ahead and and do it but obviously that's the reason we went ahead and, and submitted it for publication so now at this stage what our plan is going to be is to is use an impact dcb uh at this level and then and and then, and and then and then we're going to go 80. ahead and place the supera and we balloon with a 60 so that uh, the, uh, the the reference vessel diameter is a 6 and obviously when it's a little bit uh, <clears throat> at a 60 we're going to go with a 55 supera so 55 supera is now going to go in and then we're going to go ahead and 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 use a uh, a, a coronary ds within Vishal, as you know, the controversy really is, does the chicken go first or does the egg go first? Because a lot of people would then try to land the, the, the DS and then put the supera inside. Obviously, uh, the three of us, uh, at least myself, with my experience, I feel that the expansion of the DES, like you said, is much better. And that's what Karthik and I discussed, that we can post dilate the DES to match the supera and not have any, any issues with flow. The beauty of using a supera up top at the level of the collaterals is also to make sure that hopefully we don't lose those important collaterals. And if you use a covered stent, obviously you can as well. So at this stage now, what we're doing is uh, we're, I don't know, Karthik, how many minutes have gone by? Three yeah. minutes, I guess two minutes have gone by. Yeah. And now, now Dr. Guja is going to walk it out, and then we're going to go ahead and place the supera. Actually, save that image for me, Karthik, so you know where, where to place the supera. Yeah, I was going to say. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So just, uh, Saved it? No, just fluoro save it, fluoro it. Uh-huh. Good. Oh. No, you know, you're on, on Flora roadmap. Set. Yeah, it's on roadmap. So now you know exactly where yeah. to place if Flora. You, if you don't move your But it's not on roadmap, though. Yeah, now Flora it again. So you know where it is. But how are you going to know where it is? You, you know, know it. Uh, like, roadmap it. No, Karthik, it. roadmap is different roadmap than... It. Yeah. No, so I, you got you to you do this, see? Store Flora. See? No, not this. I'm sorry. Store, yeah, store Flora this. Oh. Either... See? Just, and now, and now, now you have it, see? Okay. Now it's stored on the side. You see that? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Walk it out. See, it's right there. You see the balloon yeah, is still there? Yeah. Okay. So now you know where to go. So Dr. Guja doesn't get into the room often these days, so you know, you know how what it is. What do you mean I don't get into the room I'm that just often. saying. I was surprised you actually crossed. <laughs> wow. It's like, wow. <laughs> Twinkle was saying, oh, my goodness, please. <laughs> All right. All jokes aside, here we go with the Sapera. And, and uh, now, now we're entering with the Supera. And again, you know, I, I know Dr. Gujo mentioned pedal first. You know, in my opinion, you know, when a CLI patient, even though this patient has good runoff, and has occluded pop, yeah. we rarely ever put a sheath in the pedal. Yeah. Uh, you saw the nice demonstration of, of crossing and then obviously doing, doing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, capture and then working from above. So now we're just going to do the final therapy, and hopefully we don't have to do the the all the interesting thing that uh, Dr. Singh taught us uh, with the uh, with the actual uh, uh, bifurcation stenting. We're trying to avoid the bifurcation stenting here. That's our goal. 
Okay, now we know we're in the right spot. Now I'm going to let Dr. Guja take over. I'm going to mag it up for him. Just hold and, it for a little while. Okay. So, Guja, you got to walk everybody through this, your yeah. uh, technique of deploying Supera, which we all do the same thing, but let's go ahead. Okay, there's the magged up. Okay. So, so you see, Karthik, you see the stent. You want to land the stent where the dot is. So you see the stent is behind the dot. So how do you adjust for that? You see, the, you, there you go. You're going to move it forward, exactly. And what Dr. Guja is going to do is going to be a back and forth I movement. I can't see dot there. Huh? Uh, yeah, I, I don't see, see the dot. I don't see the dot. You don't see, see the you, dot? You, because you no. moved the camera. No, I placed I placed the stent exactly where the dot was. So, so the end of the stent where you see the marker is exactly where you should land the stent. I'm positive. No, but the dot moved because no, you moved yeah. the camera itself. No, 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 no. I took you off roadmap and I left it the, the, the end of the stent. You okay. see that little dot? Okay. That's where you want to land the stent. Just give me a puff a little bit. Yep. So then at least. You, you can't puff with a separa in. There you go. It's okay, Karthik. Wherever you apply, after that, you can even put a uh, long stent. A longer DES, the, exactly. Yeah. You can use a so actually, DS. actually, that's actually oh, perfect because you see it right there. There's so normally, your... what I do is I deploy, I flare a little bit, and then I adjust it as necessary. The advantage with Supira is you can push and pull it, right. at least the first, until you uh, re retrieve your uh, the deployer. Right. So I think that's a good spot. Yeah, that's exactly where it was. Yeah. And now I de I retrieve the deployer, and then go back in. I get the first flare, and then retrieve it. Now it's deployed. And that's a good dip. Oh, I don't like the configuration. A little positive pressure, please. So you want to keep a little positive pressure to get the like kind of the two lines on both sides. That's better. There you go. That's beautiful. I, I just deployed the first one. That's it. Yeah. See now, now you can see everybody. You see the how the intricacies are beautiful, and because of the vessel prep that we did, it's actually now he can actually pull back a little if he wants. Uh, yeah, no, to, I, to be I, I able, will, will. maybe later on, just to yeah. be able to make sure he lands it at the right length. So um, I usually say, who are uh, fellows? I tell the fellows that normally you should have two lead lines on each side of the stent. That's the perfect deployment of Supera. So if you have, if you take a paper and draw two lead lines on each side. That's but that's line. a little over. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull. Yeah. I'm going to pull because that's where the lesion is. I think is. that the, exactly that area is where all the reentry and the fibrotic was. So you just yeah, but it doesn't it. matter because it's deploying like butter. So that means you prep the vessel well. So I don't think there's any reason yeah, to stack there. Nice. Yeah, there's no reason to stack there. Yeah, you know? so like Karthik said, all the dots you can see it individually. They almost become like a line, but they're not. If they're exactly like a line, then they're probably too much compressed. If they, if you don't see the dots, that means they're far away. So. The one right there is like a perfect example of how the supera should be deployed. The crisscross, and especially the dots on the two sides, which gives you a very good idea. Yep. And over there, it's a little too compressed. You can see up top, right? Yeah, that's where the that's where most of the lesion is. So I'm going to pull it now. Oh, but there's no right reason there. to stack. No, no, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not stacking. See, now I pulled it back. Right. I like bit. that better. I yeah. think that's the way you got to deploy yeah. it. Even that is a little too stacked, but that's okay. Let's come back a little more. The idea is also cost, guys. If you stack the stent too much, then then obviously you're increasing the cost. See, that's overstacked as well. Yeah, I'm pulling so, it back. Yep, I'm pulling it back. A little bit above. I'm there pulling it back. I'm pulling it there back. There you go. So you know you definitely want to be able to use one stent here because you prepared it so beautifully, and at this stage, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So he's just going to put a little negative and then deploy it, and hopefully that'll cover the lesion. We'll see. Hopefully we're not yeah. short. No, we are not short. Actually, yeah. the vessel the vessel is so big, and like, it's so loose on it. Yeah, well, we prepped it really well. Okay, walk it back, and let's take a nice DSA. All right, now we're gonna now we're gonna decide on the DS. Now, remember the one thing with the Supera, as everybody knows, you're not gonna be able to post dilate this. So, because you're not gonna be able to post dilate this, it's very important that you get one to one uh, stacking. And how's our bleeding there? Any bleeding or nothing? I hope no, so. not much. No, just nothing. small ooze, that's it. All right. What's up with our pressure? Okay, everything is good. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to go low mag and then take a, la a picture, and then we're going to finish this up in a second. And... This high mag. The other way. Oh, the other way. The other low mag. <laughs> there you go. Good. So the wire is back, which is fine. Uh, always happens. And there's always happens. It's a pair. All right, ready? Let's do a quick DSA. 
All right, hold on, let me. <clears throat> so it starts at around 14 and ends at like around uh, ready uh, eight. So it's a perfect 80. So. Well, that's why we chose an 80. Oh. Well, we might have to put a little bit proximally, but we'll decide that. It looks like she's going to need another stand. We can do that offline. Let's go ahead and, and let's do a well, now. Just DCB a, 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 and leave it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, DCB let's, it and leave it. Yeah, let's, let's do a, uh, a simple, uh, what do you want to do? A, let's 38. Do, is, is it a 38? Yeah. Put it on yeah. now. Actually, less than a 38, but it is. I think it's less than a 38, yeah. Let's, this is fine. Let's do a roadmap, quick roadmap. It's probably mm -hmm. 14 it, to 17. Yeah, 33. Little, little inject. That's enough. You hear a roadmap. Yeah, it's very you short. It's, the marker. No, but it's very short, though, you can see. See? Very short. So I like 33. Yeah. 33. 5 0 33? 5 33. 33 would be more than enough. You want to do a 5 or you want to do a 4? 5 0 5. 5, five. five, five 33. Five. Well, it doesn't matter. If 28, 28 is fine. Four we can always post dial it. Yeah. 5 5, yeah. Four yeah, we'll do, a five yeah, we'll a do five a, five we session. have a 5 0, so we'll just use a 5 0. 5 0 28. And then above, we'll just use a DCP. So, so you know, as we're getting we're about an hour and a half into this case, uh, you can see that we've crossed, we put the Supera. Dr. Singh has given you a wonderful lecture on bifurcation. So, I think at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy this, we're going to take a foot shot for you, and then we're going to say goodbye. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to just plan on doing, like Dr. Guja said, a DCB of the proximal um, SFA. Uh, leave it. You know, if, if, if we feel there's a need, right? Yeah. So we'll look at the oh, flow, yeah. we'll assess, we'll make sure there's no dissection, and then we'll take it from there. So just a quick question from the audience. Would you add that drug with DCB, if you're using one versus short Thank versus you, long, would you add it to the Supera segment as well, the DCB? Is it any benefit now? Well, 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 we added the DCB, right? We already did the DCB prior to Perfect. the Supera. So I think, I mean, we all believe that drug-coated balloon works, but we know that in complex lesions, 45% of the patients need to have scaffolding. Right. So that's why I don't believe you have the silver bullet that tells you, okay, you know, just the drug is going to be enough for you. So you can see here, here we come. And now I think so I'll take the roadmap off. Now we're just going to come off roadmap, and Karthik is going yeah. to, you know, just to give a little puff to see where we are while we prep everything up. Do they wire down a little? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. One, two, don't go up. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to send the wire down a little bit. There you go. That's good enough. Okay, now Karthik, why don't you just mag up to make sure that we're not uh, jailing our AT? Mag it up nicely. A little more. One more. Okay, good. Now, a little die. I just want to place this in the right spot. I'm, I yeah. think I'm a little too deep. Yeah, yeah I think it's definitely. just a touch deep. I, and it's, you know, actually, we're a touch short. Touch mm -hmm. short. I think it's perfect sizing. Right That's there. perfect. Agreed? Yeah, agreed. Uh, touch back. One second. Touch one, back a little one, bit. One stand start back. Yep. I saw it move forward a little bit more. There you go. Agree? That's Perfect. a good, that's yeah. a good go. spot. Okay, go yeah, up, go my dear. So balloon expandable stents here really help you as well, right? Because you, you know that actually. you can be very, very accurate in how you're doing it. And you know that nice. you have the radial strength. So, so okay, good. Like and go expansion. to nominal. Yep, nominal. Down so. and go up again. Pull back a little bit. Well, I'm just going to go up twice and then I'll pull back and go high pressure. Yep. Down. No. So now I'm going to pull it back slightly. Let it come down. Okay, now go really high pressure. Like 20, so we'll go to like 20 atmospheres 20, here. 24. Yep. That's maximum. Down. Good. Hmm? Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Down. Okay, so hopefully this will be the end of uh, this case. We'll just take a cine. And, and we'll get a we'll get a six O balloon and we'll go up a little higher. We'll just take a cine? Yep, I'm just gonna walk it out a little. Nice. I like the expansion of the stent. Yeah, right. It tapered off distally nicely. Mm -hmm. okay. This is, uh, we'll this tell you in a second. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Make a little bit lower, Karthik. Oh, okay. That's good, actually. That's perfect. Open the shutters. Yeah, yeah. I want to see the flow. That's why. Ready? Perfect. Inject. That's enough. It's 
perfect. Perfect. Great. So now, now you've done. Now you haven't touched your AT. You haven't lost your collaterals, as you guys all can see. Okay. There's no and dissection. You have, you have plane, no nothing. dissection. You have great straight line flow to the foot. So let's take a low mag foot shot, and then we'll decide here what we're going to do, and then uh, we're done. So we'll, we'll we'll just make sure that everything looks good in the foot in our access site, and. Uh, Oops. Is this low mag or? This yeah. is low mag. There you go. Okay, good. Ready? Okay, don't move, sir. Inject. There's your PT, there's your perineal, and there's your AT coming all the way down to the Beautiful. Front. So, obviously, we've done a nice job of being able to fix the popliteal. Dr. Guja is holding a little pressure. As you can see, there's a little oozing coming yeah. out. You don't want it to be a suit. The flow is so good. It's like it doesn't you stop. <laughs> that's a very good. As you see right there, there's a little little, little bleeding right there, which, again, is expected. Like so, hi, so again, while we decide what to do, I just want to close up. Why don't you guys take an interrogate the SFA? Get an IVIS, guys, to interrogate the SFA. So um, I just want to go ahead and make sure that if there's any significant gradients in the SFA, uh, mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and take care of it. Actually, Karthik, do a gradient in the SFA. Yeah, just do, let's do a gradient that's in the SFA. So, so, so what we're going to do now is we're going to check the gradient in the SFA, Vishal, and then we're going to go ahead and obviously do what's necessary, but that's not the reason uh, for this live demonstration. So, speak, so just in, in summary and recap, I think you, know, you saw our logical way of approaching a, a bifurcation and not worrying about really extending the AT or the PT or the perineal, we know that we have a completely occluded popliteal segment. And because of that completely occluded popliteal segment, it's almost impossible for, for straight line flow to go to the foot. Now we've opened the popliteal segment. We know he's got I'll good blood it. flow to the leg. We haven't lost any of the distal no, vessels. We're going to make our inflow perfect. So that's why Dr. Guja is going to do a quick uh, uh, you know, pressure gradient in, in, the, in the SFA. After which, what we're going to do is we're going to decide, you know, what do we do now? Well, we're going to stop. And we're going to give, give the wound healing a chance. And we're going to follow the wound very, very closely. If the wound does not heal or does not progress the way we expect it to progress, then we will definitely come back and take care of that anterior tibial proximal lesion to help the wound heal. In my opinion, I think we've, we've achieved a, a fantastic result. Uh, we've done, um, we, we, we demonstrated how to cross uh, without compromising the distal vessel. And the concept that was very important that was hammered home was not to snow plow or dissect into the AT or the PT. So now Dr. Guja is going to do the gradient. And, and with that, I'm going to thank Dr. Singh for such a great presentation. She really did a fantastic job of really, uh, you know, demonstrating and, and discussing all the different techniques of crossing as well as of, of treatment. Uh, obviously, Vishal Karthik, thank you, and uh, and uh, and Elizabeth and and, uh, and Damien and our entire crew at Medinbox, thanks so much for changing the date at such short notice. And and we will definitely see you guys next month in August. Uh, we have a fantastic live case of a aneurysmal dilatation of an artery, which I think is going to be a lot of fun to treat. And uh, like I said, we'll continue on this. So Vishal, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Maybe you can remind them about the dates of the symposium, and we take it from there. Thank you again, everyone. All right. Thank you, PK. Thank you to the audience for attending uh, this live monthly broadcast from Mount Sinai. Um, a great case by Dr. Guja and Dr. Krishnan. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed it. Any questions, concerns, you can add thoughts and comments. Uh, you can email us on our website, cccliveCases.org, under the Peripheral Intervention tab. You can also view our previously archived cases up there for any education, knowledge, or previous uh, cases done. In regards to our New, uh, New York Endovascular Summit, it's scheduled, like PK said, on October 15th and 16th, preceded by a one-day fellows course on October 14th. Please get ready to join us in New York City. Um, the agenda uh, will be up and running on the website pretty soon in the next uh, 10 days uh, or so. Uh, for the next case, we'll be live back again from New York City, Mount Sinai on August 25th, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Till then, have a great week and a month ahead. See you next month.